start, uh, actually we're going to introduce our former program coordinator for business, Ms. Amy Fest, and she'd like to say something because she has an obligation and she has to fly. So we're going to, oh, she'll be back. Thank you. Hey, I just wanted to welcome everybody. Um, I know many faces in the room. I am the former program coordinator for business and I'm now the interim academic dean. And it was an honor to work with Professor Lardy a few years ago to start the Katie Camp Society for the business program. It is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity and a real recognition of the hard work that you all put in. So your family should be very proud of you. We're very proud of you. We can't wait to watch what you're going to do in the future. Um, I do unfortunately have to fly. My daughters are in a show at 7.30 and it's 40 minutes away, so I'm good to not be there. But thank you so much for everybody who came tonight to support our students, and we just look forward to seeing where everybody's going to end up in the future. I would just like to give uh, recognition to some of our faculty and uh, uh, advisory committee members who are here. Uh, Professor Mark Maluski is standing there. He's the cameraman tonight, and he's going to also be involved in the ceremony. He's going to swear you in. Uh, we also have Kashiana Machado. She is the new business program coordinator, and Kashiana is going to give an inspiring speech as you leave tonight. <laughs> and our third faculty member, Jessica Waterhouse, is standing right here. Jessica is the co chair of the uh, Social Science Business Criminal Justice. Early childhood, we, we kind of consolidated. Uh, but anyway, she's she's relatively new to the business side, but uh, she's been in criminal justice now for quite a while. As a faculty member, not as a, a felon or anything like that. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple. Uh, is there any other faculty members here that I did not see? We've got a couple of our uh, advisory committee members, and we rely on them since they're not part of the uh, society, uh, excuse me, of the faculty to give us some information and tell us what we're doing. One of them is a former student, Fernando Macaro. You stay right here, stand up and recognize him. <laughs> for some reason he liked us so much when we asked him to volunteer, he did. But I believe the other one is Don Clausen over here. He's <laughs> now People's United. I'm not too happy about that, by the way. That was 40 years with Farmington Man. And now it's people's fault. But anyway, Dawn and Dawn brought her daughter here because this is going to inspire her. Right? That's right. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, our former dean of students, Dr. Kirk Peters, who's been with us uh, 17 years, I believe, as dean. And he likes us so much, he's going to be on our faculty starting in the spring. So. We lost him as the dean, but we kept him as the faculty member. Dr. Peters, Hi, good evening all. Um, yesterday I spent some time researching uh, KBD, as I did last year, I talked about it, but I went for, uh, quite often at noon I go for bike rides, and I went on a bike ride today, and I usually do my best thinking when I'm riding my bike, and I thought about you, and I decided to talk from the heart today. And my thoughts were, you know, this, this our society is very selective. It talks to some really proud of us that we, uh, we have a society. And of course, I'm very proud of you. And I went around and tried to introduce myself to many of you. But uh, I would say to you that I don't want you to brag about this, but I want you to take it to heart. I want you to take pride in announcing uh, what you're achieving tonight because uh, more than anything is a dad. And I think I could be everyone's, everyone that's being up that I could be a dad. I'm in my 60s, so and I say this from a dad perspective. The best thing is that when my kids are proud of themselves, and I ask you, and I'm hoping that you're very proud of yourself because uh, that really warms my heart. And I know over the years, Professor Lardy, has talked so glowingly about the society and glowingly about you. So we're proud of you. I hope you feel even more proud of yourself. 
Um, you were way ahead of the game as far as my experience. When I was an undergraduate student, I was a terrible student. And it wasn't because I partied, I went to a, I went to UMass Amherst, an undergraduate. And I did everything but work hard. I was I played a little football, I was on the volleyball team. We even had a bowling team that we used to play against Army and Navy. Honestly, I was on the bowling team. Uh, chess club, I started a transcendental meditation group at, in my residential community of 5,600 students. Um, I did everything, and I worked hard except in the classroom. I figured it out when I went to graduate school, and by the time I went, uh, went on to my doctoral studies, I was a dad. That's full time in itself. I was a dean at Trinity College, working full time, and I was a full time doctoral student. So I figured it out. Things that you obviously figured out much before I did. So good for you. But I'm here to say there's so much more. There's so much more you can push yourself. Um, I got to the time when I was at Trinity during my doctoral studies, I think 1991. Trinity faculty person who was well known Shakespeare scholar came up to me and said she wants to stage a fellow. And I said, well, that's very nice. And she said, but I want you to be a fellow. And I'm going to tell you, in high school, when, I had, when we read Shakespeare, I had no idea what I was reading. But <laughs> well, this prose was the furthest thing from my mind. I remember reading things not knowing a word of what I was reading. And in class, so I took this class, and I, she introduced me, and I knew many of the Trinity students. And she asked me to read a passage, and I butchered it. And I was embarrassed. And I said, I will never be embarrassed like that again. So I took this role of Othello, and I started understanding Elizabethan prose, and I needed help. And help came to me by hearing James Earl Jones, and even more so, Paul Robeson. So I heard recordings of these two great men reading the bell, and all of a sudden they clicked in. But it took me a couple of months. I was walking around Hartford reciting Elizabethan prose. People thought I was probably, you know, the weirdest guy in the world. But that same line, that same passage from 1991 to 1992, we stayed for two years. I think it was the part where the said to, uh, and again, someone who had no idea what I was reading. Um, the tired customers were your centers. Have made the Flintian still count to war by thrice for the bed of down. Enjoying my as a natural and prompt to lacquer tank by the carcass. And you undertake these present wars against the other ones. Well, somebody therefore, that each is eight. I crave this disposition, disposition for my wife. Do reference the place and exhibition. It's such a combination with the swords of my reading. I, when I first read it, I had no idea, but I embraced it. Something that you're doing, and even going on, I'm hoping that many of you will go on to study in a four year, and many of you will go on to get your master's perhaps. And I hope you take this to heart to push yourself, because again, if I can do that, I am not brilliant. I worked hard to get my doctoral degree. I think I was a pretty bright kid that made it through undergraduate. I don't know how, because I was somewhat bright, but I was not bright. You folks are probably a lot brighter than I am, and you can do a lot more in your in your studies by pushing yourselves. And I hope you do that. Um, but I'll come back to what when I did a research about KBD, the, the three things, the, well, the three words that came to me was what this meant: kappa, meaning to itself; beta, or beta, meaning trustworthy. And Delta, genuine esteem. And I know, I know a couple of you, and I'm very happy to meet Patricia just recently. I'm guessing all of you excel, that you're trustworthy, and that you're genuine esteem. And I'm just very proud to be part of uh, this group tonight, and I congratulate all of you. Thank you.
and that's, uh, this is another. We like to think that we have something to do about it, or maybe a little bit. But the fact of the matter is, it's really you people, the students, more importantly, the support that you get from your families takes you away from your families, especially the nice students. So, kind of unusual, but I'd like the family members to stand and be recognized for the success they've provided for their students. Please rise. Isabel 
Kamala or less shit? Did I say it right now? Or less shit. Close enough? Okay. <laughs> and also, uh, Linda Ryder, who cannot make it here tonight. And it's uh, Catherine Savoya. Did Catherine make it tonight? Oh, Catherine's not here. Uh, and he is Scott. Congratulations, you are here today because your academic excellence has entitled you to join Kappa Beta Delta, the Honor Society for Business Students and two-year college accredited by the Accreditation Council of Business Schools and Programs. Our organization name is based on the principles on which these Greek words present. Kappa is the initial letter of the word kratisu, which means to itself. Beta is the initial letter of the word bebus, which means trustworthy. Delta is the initial word of dokimos, which means genuine and esteemed. You as a member of Kappa Beta Delta will be expected to live up to the name of our society. You've already proven your ability to excel in your academics. However, this quality of excellence is one that you should continue to implement as a lifelong trait. Kappa Beta Delta members realize the importance of being trustworthy. They recognize the importance of truth and honesty in our daily lives, in education, and in the business world. As members of Kappa Beta Delta, you should strive to be genuine and true to yourself, your family, friends, and business associates. If you hold yourself in high esteem, others will do so also. Implementing these characteristics of excellence, trustworthiness, and genuineness will not be an easy undertaking throughout your lives, but it will certainly be a rewarding one. The colors of our honor society are blue and gold. Blue signifies aristocracy, and to the observer evokes radiant energy. Gold implies riches, values, and strength. Our emblem is a diamond shape, which indicates the highest quality. Wear our colors and our key with Please repeat after me your pledge to Kappa Beta Delta. So here we go. This is where you participate. I, please state your name. Promise to abide by the guidelines. Established by the Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs. And Kappa, Beta Delta. and Kappa Beta Delta. I will uphold the ideals, will uphold the ideals. Set, forth by our name. set forth by our name, excellence, excellence. Trustworthiness. Trustworthiness. trustworthiness, and genuineness. And genuineness. I, agree to uphold the standards. I agree to uphold the standards, set forth by our chapter, here at Tulsa's Community College, to be an active member, and to assist our officers of Kappa Beta Delta. Congratulations. And now I think we have some presentations. Mark, 
Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Do we have everybody just? Cheese. Uh, nope. You guys scooch in okay. just a little bit more. Dress right, dress for the military.
for those of you that have the impasse, bear, please bear with me. Um, I'm an alum of Tunsis, and so this is really special to me because when I started working here, it was like coming back home, and I think Chris can vouch for that. I remember, and, and she still teaches here, Professor Grisilli I had for marketing, and I took the class and I really loved it, and she kept saying to me, I want you to go forth, succeed, but always come back and let me know what you're up to. And I really took her seriously. <laughs> and years later, when she was about to retire, she said, how do you feel about teaching at Tunsis? And so that's how I came back to Tunsis. And oftentimes, I tell my classes that when you come to see me for advising, you're not just a student sitting across from me. I see myself in you. And so the homework is to keep in touch with us. We want to know what's going to happen. You're going to go on. You're going to graduate. By the way, make sure that you wear your tassel and all that. At graduation, we'll be looking for you to do that. Um, go forth and succeed. But always remember us, come back, just as Fernando did, which uh, Professor Lardy had said. Come back and let us know what you're up to. Um, it's very exciting to see you all reach this achievement and then go beyond that. And we always feel like a family. And so I hope that tonight, as Professor Lardy had said, this is a, you know, a big deal. Um, Dr. Peter said that as well. We should really celebrate but go forth and succeed, and that's your homework. Keep in touch. Thank you.